Enemy I can make or break games. Consider the last games you've played. Does it feel like the enemy has a mutated brain or something that they are able to decide thing on their own? That's a sign that game has a good enemy AI. And our task today is to design an AI that is realistic enough and maybe somehow improve our game. There are two things we need to consider in designing enemy AI. First, what are the behavior or set of behaviors an enemy AI should have? For demonstration purposes, we will only have the following. Luckily, with just these set of behaviors, we can already create a realistic and engaging enemy AI. The second thing we need to consider is what are the events or input or inputs that will trigger these behaviors. Once we identify it, we are already halfway through it. Now to easily illustrate this idea, I'm gonna show you the code of my enemy AI. I will try to explain it line by line as we go through it. These four unready variable declaration just reference the important nodes my enemy AI. Just take note the first two only for now. The variable reference player is just to reference the player. Some of these variables are pretty much self-explanatory so I will not explain it here. The velocity is to store the movements of the enemy and the direction if the enemy will face left or right. Now the state is just a single value storage for the current state. And the enum states is a holder for the set of behaviors. Now we have three functions that we will gonna call at the override process. The handle physics, handle flipping, and handle states. The handle states is the most important one. We use a match keyword to enable us to have one state at a time. Inside this are all the states I defined inside the enum states. Now I also played animations inside each states. If you don't want the animation to loop, just the if statement to the last frame, then change state. Now you may notice that I use state and states differently. It is because states is the enum that holds all the states or behavior of the enemy and the state is a single value storage of the current state. It is also important to understand that the match keyword plays a major part here because it enables us to easily go from one state to another. Now I will show you what this states can do. Notice that the enemy will always face the player and it is in his idle state because it's playing idle animation. Now, what we want is to make it attack or change its state to attacking. I don't know if you notice in the code, but I added a click input event that will trigger the change state to attack. I will show you the code later. We have an issue here. The enemy fill flip even in attacking state and we don't want that so I will add a short script. Just by adding these conditional statement we can prevent enemy from flipping when in attack state. Notice now the enemy don't flip. I am showing you this because, as I said earlier, in designing enemy AI we need an event triggers to change states. Now it looking good, but we are not done yet. Did you notice that the enemy immediately changed state just after the slash? We can fix that just by duplicating the last frame. We also need to change the condition. For the last part, I'll explain to you what these two functions does. The handle physics just handle the gravity by adding the gravity in its Y value every frame. And because we don't have movement, we just set it X value to the value of direction. Now the handle flipping just set the value of the direction to the difference of the reference player and the enemy global position then normalizing it. We then flip the sprite depending on its value. And that's it for this part. In the next part of the series, we're gonna cover how to make the enemy chase the player and attack when the player is in range. And if you are making a game and want to know how to make an enemy like this, be sure to subscribe and like this video, it helps a lot.